starting shortstop and we are going to be ranking them number 30 through number one and today we are getting things kicked off in three two one the number 30 shortstop the pittsburgh pirates tucapito marcano so tucapito marcano he was not supposed to be the Pirates starting shortstop this season in fairness it was supposed to be o'neill cruz obviously o'neill cruz really hyped prospect things just didn't work out for him last season he only played 11 games he missed pretty much the entire season due to a pretty bad injury and tucapito marcano is the guy who takes over as the starter 75 games scores 16 times 12 doubles three home runs uh, he does steal five bases, hits 233, 276 on base. That's not very good on base at all. And a 632 OPS. It actually was a career season for him offensively. So when that's your career season, you're just not very good. Tuka Peter Marcano, not great. As a utility man, he's solid. He does play good defense. And he does have a pretty decent floor. He's only 24. He can probably continue to improve. Maybe he's a future second baseman utility guy for the Pirates or for a different team in the future. And coming in at number 29, I have the Oakland Athletics shortstop, Nick Allen. Nick Allen split his time between shortstop, second base, and third base. He plays all three positions, and again, he's more of a utility guy. I'm not sure if the A's really see him as a long-term shortstop. I doubt they do. Played 106 games last year, 29 runs scored, four doubles, and four home runs. So he basically has no pop at all in that bat he only hit eight extra base hits 59 singles uh 20 runs batted in he walked only 17 times the on base percentage is pretty bad it's only 263 on base and a 550 ops he does get helped out because he is a really really good defender a very much a plus glove it's just the bat is really just not there and the bat has never been there he hit 221 which i guess is better than he hit in 2022 he was hit 207 but yeah nick allen not very good he's number 29 and at number 28, I have the New York Mets short, or excuse me, currently on the New York Mets. Last season, he was on the Miami Marlins, Joey Wendell. Joey Wendell, another guy who probably shouldn't be a starting shortstop in an ideal world. In an ideal world, he's really more of a third base utility kind of role. And that is what the Mets acquired him to be. The Mets want him to be a utility guy. Last year with the Marlins, he was obviously he was probably going to be their utility guy, but John Birdie, who was meant to be their shortstop, got hurt. So Joey Wendell fills in 112 games, 63 base hits, 33 runs scored, 16 doubles, two homers, 20 runs batted in. He hit 212. That's a career low batting average, 248 on base, also career low, and a 306 slugging, combining for a 554 OPS. Defense is solid, but Joey Wendell, for a guy who used to, he was once an all star second baseman, but last season as a shortstop just didn't cut it. 33 years old Mets are hoping for a bounce back but he's not going to be a starter anymore and at number 27 like the picture here I have the San Francisco Giants Brandon Crawford Brandon Crawford the veteran shortstop in his last season most likely in the MLB he hasn't retired yet but I'm not sure who's going to want to sign this guy he's just old and bad last year was just 94 games the lowest he's played in a full season since his rookie year in 2011 he hits 194 273 on base and a 314 slugging he does still manage seven home runs 11 doubles 38 runs batted in and three stolen bases for a guy who's i think like 38 39 years old still got a little bit of speed but the pop in his bat pretty much gone he's used to be a defensive wizard he's not really that good defensively anymore maybe the giants or some other team brings him in to be maybe like a veteran kind of utility guy but i don't think brandon crawford would really want to be a utility guy i think he liked being a starting shortstop i think he enjoys being an everyday player and i don't think that he's going to want to go to another team just to be a utility guy my guess is he's going to retire and yeah he goes out kind of with a whimper because he was 27th last season and coming in at number 26 this is a really exciting young player Zach Nito of the Los Angeles Angels. And Zach Nito, only 22 years old, and he had some pretty good moments last season. He also had some pretty bad ones. Finishes with a 225 average, 308 on base, 377 slugging, nine home runs, and 17 doubles. So Zach Nito has some pop in that bat. Also, he's solid defensively. He's not going to be an elite glove, I don't think, but solid defensively and only played 84 games. So he played half the season and put up solid power numbers, especially for a shortstop. I think Zach Nino could rise up these lists, but for this season, he's at number 26. And coming in at number 25, I have the Chicago White Sox, Tim Anderson. Rough season for Tim Anderson. Obviously, you have to hope that he can bounce back because 
Yikes. I mean, this guy was a all-star who was pretty much hitting above 300 every season of his career. He hit above 300 four years in a row. That's pretty impressive. But last year, his batting average all the way down to 245 on base, 286, slugging 296. It's just not very good last season. He did still still steal 13 bases, 18 doubles, but only one home run. That's a career low. He just had no pop last year. 25 runs batted in, also not very good. And... 52 runs scored he did that in 123 games and so Tim Anderson you know the injuries have kind of been always a factor in his career but last year it wasn't really the injuries it was just bad play maybe some excuse me maybe somebody takes a flyer on him I'm not really sure if anybody's going to take a flyer on him maybe my Seattle Mariners will I, I don't know it's it's gonna be tough for him to land a suitor and at number 24 I have the Baltimore Orioles starting shortstop last season he will not be anymore but last season Jorge Mateo, solid player for the Orioles, but really more of a utility guy. He hit 217, 267 on base, 340 slugging, steals 32 bases, so he's really, really fast. He's got some intangibles, 14 doubles, 7 home runs, so not a whole lot of pop in that bat. 58 runs scored, 34 runs batted in, and he does it in 116 games. Jorge Mateo is a good defender. He's really quick. He can play all around the infield. I think there's a role with him for the Orioles next season, but it's not going to be at shortstop. Because Gunnar Henderson is going to take over as their starting shortstop next season. He kind of did take over as their starting shortstop about halfway through the year. But Jorge did play more games there. So that's why he gets to be in this video. If you're looking for Gunnar Henderson, he's going to be in a video of the best utility players from 2023. And spoiler alert, he's pretty darn high on that list. And coming in at number 23, I have the St. Louis Cardinals, Paul DeYoung. Paul DeYoung is now with the Chicago White Sox, so he's going to get a chance to potentially replace Tim Anderson there. But it's really not much of an upgrade. They moved from 26 to 23. Yeah, not much of an upgrade. Paul DeYoung, not very good. Last season, he hit 207. Believe it or not, that's the best batting average he's hit in three seasons. He hit 197 in 2021. He was a starting shortstop for the Cardinals, but they ditched him halfway through the year and gave him off to the Toronto Blue Jays, who then ditched him again and handed him off to the Giants, who then cut him at the end of the season. So now he's with the White Sox. I'm not really sure what the White Sox are banking on here. He had, he had a 258 on base last year, 355 slugging. He did hit 14 homers and 13 doubles. So he's got a little bit of pop, but ultimately just not that good. Not great defensively. He's getting older, and yeah, he's not the same player that he used to be. Coming in at number 22, I have the Los Angeles Dodgers starting shortstop last year, Miguel Rojas. Miguel Rojas also not going to be a starter next year because he was also filling in for Gavin Lux. Gavin Lux, though, missed the entire season with an injury. So Miguel Rojas, after being with the Marlins for eight years, after his rookie season was with the Dodgers, he goes back to the Dodgers in 125 games, scores 49 runs, Knocks in 31, 16 doubles, 5 home runs, steals 8 bags, hits 236, 290 on base, 322 slugging, and a 612 OPS. So offensively, he's about what he's about what you'd expect from a below average shortstop. Defensively, he is good. He is, again, kind of a utility guy. He can play some second, play some third. Not sure if the Dodgers are going to keep him around next season. We'll see if they do. But if not, I think he'll land with a team somewhere. Just, again, probably not as a starter. He's 34. He's a veteran guy, not doing much. And just missing out on the top 20, I have at number 21, the Detroit Tigers' Javier Baez. This is the second year in a row that Javier Baez has missed out on the top 20. After being a perennial top 10 guy for about six seasons, he misses out on the top 20 back-to-back -back years. And if the Tigers could get out of his contract, I guarantee you right now that they would. Last season, he hit 222. That's the lowest in his career outside of the COVID year. 267 on base. Again, besides COVID, lowest of his career. 325 slugging again besides COVID actually even with COVID that's the lowest of his career and a 592 OPS which is again the lowest of his career so he had a career worst year in 2022 he was bad I don't think he could have got any worse in 2023 but he did he got even worse in 2023 only hits nine home runs that's a career low 18 doubles that's a career low uh 58 runs scored that's a career low 59 runs batted in, that's a career low. And again, I'm talking besides the COVID year because I don't think that one really counts. Javier Baez, just not very good. Defensively, he used to be a wizard. Now he's still pretty good, but not the elite defender he used to be. 
Maybe he moves to third base. I don't really know what the plan is for Javier Baez. Maybe he moves to second, but the Tigers don't really have a shortstop option right now besides him. So even though he got benched multiple times last season, I think he's going to be their starter again going into 2024, and you have to hope he can bounce back. Again, the top 20 started off. I have the Boston Red Sox, Enrique Hernandez. Now, Enrique Hernandez got traded midseason to the Dodgers, but he actually started the most games for the Red Sox at shortstop last season, so he gets to be in the video Overall, he had a pretty nice season, 140 games, uh, scores 57 times, 23 doubles, 11 homers, 61 runs batted in, with a 237 batting average, 289 on base, 357 slugging, and a 646 OPS. So Enrique Hernandez, pretty solid. He also can play some center field, second base, third base, left field, right field. He basically plays every single position except for catcher. He's a fun player. He's an exciting player. He also can just brings a lot of energy to a team. He really is kind of a vibes guy, as well as just a guy who plays really good defense and is consistently not terrible. But offensively, yeah, not amazing. It was not his worst season. Definitely wasn't his best season either. He comes in right at number 20. And coming in at number 19, this is a guy who I expect will definitely be climbing the lists. Uh, this is Ellie De La Cruz of the Cincinnati Reds. Ellie De La Cruz, as a 21-year-old last season, played in 98 games. He hit 235, 300 on base, but this is what catches your eye 410 slugging which for a shortstop 410 is pretty good 710 ops he steals 35 bases so he's really really fast and he has some power 15 doubles 7 triples 13 home runs so he's got pop and speed and he defensively he's pretty good and he's a shortstop ellie daily cruz has all the tools of being a superstar in the making the problem is he just has to get that on base percentage and that batting average up because when he does get hits they usually go for extra bases, he's getting them in clutch situations. 44 runs batted in, 67 runs scored. He's contributing to this offense really well. Just needs to be a little more consistent. He can see himself climb way up these rankings. There is a bit of debate, though. Is he going to be a shortstop long-term, or are they going to turn to Matt McClain? Or eventually, they also have Edwin Arroyo Jr., top 50 prospect in the, uh, I believe he's in AA. So they do have a couple of other options to play shortstop who might be better defensively. Ellie De La Cruz may be looking at a third baseman. Maybe he moves to the outfield. I'm not really sure. But right now, this last season, he was a shortstop. And that's where he gets to be. And coming in at number 18, I have Ahmed Rosario. Ahmed Rosario, the picture shows him with the Dodgers. He was actually the starting shortstop last season for the Cleveland Guardians. He played 94 games with the Guardians. Then he gets traded to the Dodgers and played 48 games with them. And obviously with the Dodgers, he was splitting some time with Miguel Rojas so he didn't play he wasn't necessarily the Dodgers starter he was however the Guardian starter and I thought you have to get him a spot in this video because he was pretty good last year he hit 263 which is pretty average for him he's a 272 career average guy so he's definitely going to make good contact hit for average 305 on base 378 slugging so a solid slash line especially for a shortstop I mean, for other positions 683 OPS not very good but for shortstop this year it gets you to be number 18. 25 doubles, that's good. Six home runs, that's not good. But he also tripled eight times. This is a really fast player, and he's really good at getting triples. He has hit more than six triples four times, five times in his career. That's really impressive. And he tried yeah, so eight this year. I honestly don't know how many players have ever done that. I have to look that up. 70 runs scored, 58 runs batted in, and 15 stolen bases. So he's got some speed, not much power though, and solid defensively, but not amazing. Ahmed Rosario, pretty good season. He's a free agent now. I do expect he'll land a deal with somebody, maybe a team like the Pirates. I don't know. I mean, the Pirates like their guy, though. Maybe a team like the White Sox should take a chance. Maybe a team like the Padres. I don't know. Somebody's going to have to take a chance on this guy. Maybe not to play shortstop. Maybe to play a different position. He can probably move over to second base as well. He's, he seems like a guy that's going to have a job somewhere. Maybe the Giants. Maybe the, Gi maybe the Oakland A's could bring him in. Somebody's going to give this guy a chance. And coming in at number 17, I have the Atlanta Braves, Orlando Arcia. Now, Orlando Arcia was an all-star last year. After he made the all-star game, he kind of fell off numbers-wise. Still ends up hitting 264, 321 on base, and a 420 slugging. Good for 741 OPS, but the counting stats, not really there. 25 doubles, 17 homers, 65 runs batted in, 66 runs scored. He was solid, but I would not say he was anything impressive. His defense also is not amazing at shortstop. He's more of a third baseman. But Orlando Arcia, still solid year for the Braves. Kind of broke out. Uh, it was a career year for him and you know, good for him making the All-Star team. I don't think it really is going to continue, though. And at number 16, I have another All-Star guy from last season. 
Geraldo Pordoma, another guy who got off to a really blazing hot start and then kind of fell off towards the end. Seven, uh, he hit 246 batting average, 353 on base, 359 slugging, 47 runs batted in, just six home runs, four triples, 16 stolen bases, 20 doubles, and 71 runs scored. Solid defender. But Geraldo Perdomo is no superstar. I do think he can continue to improve. He's young enough that he can definitely keep getting better because he's only 24 years old. But with Jordan Lawler coming up through the system, I'm not sure how much longer he's actually going to be a starting shortstop for. Maybe he's a trade candidate. Maybe he shifts over to second base. Um, I'm not really sure what their plan is for him either, to be honest. Because, yeah, Jordan Lawler, he's going to take over eventually. So Geraldo Perdomo, more of a stopgap guy. Maybe he gets traded. Yeah, maybe he goes into more of a utility role. Not really sure. Not really sure what the move is going to be for him. But, you know, solid player. At the very least, he's going to contribute by just with his speed, with his ability to get on base. Yeah, solid player. Coming in now at number 15, I have the New York Yankees rookie shortstop Anthony Volpe. Anthony Volpe had a really good year last year. He played in almost every single game, 159 games. He doubled 23 times, 21 home runs, 60 runs batted in, and scored 62 runs. He was mostly hitting at the bottom of their lineup as well. So, you know, the runs and RBIs, not as high as you might expect for a guy who plays 159 games. But take it for what it is. He hit basically 8th and ninth most of the season. 24 stolen bases, 209 batting average, though. That's what you're looking at, and you're like, he has good stats, but the batting average is not really good. And you know why? It's because he strikes out more than once a game. 167 strikeouts, not a good look. 283 is his on-base percentage. So again, you want to see that on-base percentage go up. 383 slugging and a 666 OPS. He actually reminds me a lot of Ellie De La Cruz in the sense that this guy has a really unique combination of power, speed, and uh, the ability to play really good defensive shortstop. You know, not a lot of guys have that ability. It's guys like... You know, in the past, Alex Rodriguez, Manny Ramirez, that's who this guy is, kind of channeling Ellie De La Cruz. Like, not many shortstops are good at defense, hit for power, and are fast. He is all three, and yet the stats aren't very good because the batting average is just so bad. So he's got to work on his contact hitting, but if he can do that, he's going to be really good going forward. And coming in now at number 14, the Houston Astros shortstop, Jeremy Pena. Jeremy Pena had a good season last year in his second year. He had a lot to build on from his rookie season, and he did. Played 150 games, 81 runs scored, 32 doubles, only 10 home runs, though. And this is the key. He hit 22 home runs as a rookie, only 10 last season. RBIs also went down to 52, but the batting average went up from 253 to 263. The on-base percentage took a huge leap from 289 up to 324. The slugging goes down, and the OPS, 705, down 10 points from 715 last season. So Jeremy Pena, actually slightly worse than he was last season, but still solid season out of Jeremy Pena, number 14. Coming in at number 13, I have the Minnesota Twins. Carlos Correa signed a big contract, and the 29-year-old didn't really live up to it last season. He played 135 games, 60 runs, 29 doubles, 18 home runs, 65 runs batted in. And, okay, 18 home runs is not great for him. He's hit more than 20 home runs six times in his career, so 18 feels a little bit low. But, you know, he's never been a huge power guy. The big problem was his batting average. Batting average has never been below... 260 before last year he hit 230 also his on base percentage went down 312 slugging 399 went down never had a slugging percentage below 400 before unless you count the covid year so yeah pretty bad season for all things considered by his standards but still to the average shortstop he was pretty good he had a good he had a solid season for the average shortstop not the greatest defensively but he holds his own at the position Coming in at number 12, I have Ezekiel Tovar of the Colorado Rockies, a guy who really flies under the radar. Last year as a rookie, though, he had a really nice season, I thought. He hit 253, 287 on base, not great, but the 408 slugging, and again, you say, well, what about the chords effect? Well, I'm not judging off the chords effect. I'm judging off of how well did you play. Uh, 37 doubles, that's really, really good. 15 homers, 4 triples, 11 stolen bases, so he's got some speed, got some power, plays good defense, and he's only 22 years old. I think this guy can really improve going into next season. I have him at number 12. Really good season. Underrated season from a guy who nobody's really ever heard of in Ezekiel Tavar. And just missing out on the top 10, I have the Toronto Blue Jays shortstop, Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette 
had a pretty up and down season last year. It was not his best season by any metrics, but it was still a fine year. Bo Bichette, I can't remember if he made the All-Star game or not. I think he did. Still managed to hit 306, which was actually the second highest of his career. But his on-base percentage did go a little bit down, 339. Slugging went down as well, 475. But the OPS at 814 in 135 games, this guy hit 30 doubles, 20 home runs, stole five bags, three triples, 73 runs batted in, and 69 runs scored. So good season from a 25-year-old who's going to keep improving. He does fall out of the top 10 for this year, but I think he's going to be able to make it back next season, no problem. And this is the part of the video where I have to mention the guy who's at number 10 played for the Tampa Bay Rays, and he could have been even higher, but unfortunately, he's just not a very good person. So right now, he's not in the league. I'm not going to talk about him, but just know that that is what the Rays had at shortstop. That is what they are losing out on. They had the 10th best shortstop in the league with the potential to be a top five, top three guy. And unfortunately, he's decided to throw his career away. So I'm not going to touch on that anymore. Moving on to number nine. How about this player? C.J. Abrams of the Washington Nationals. I'm going to move my face so you can see him. C.J. Abrams had a really underrated, low-key though, really good season. And he was a guy who a lot of people thought he might be a bust because he filled in for Tatis in San Diego last year and was so, so bad. Last year though, he had a 712 OPS because he had a 412 slugging, 300 on base, 245 batting average. You want to know what's cool about C.J. Abrams is this guy can run. He had he stole 47 bases last season after only stealing seven in his rookie season. So he contributes a lot on the base paths. Also hit 18 homers and 28 doubles and six triples. So again, C.J. Abrams, kind of similar stature to Volpe and, as, and to Ellie De La Cruz. Power, speed, defense. He's not as good defensively as Ellie De La Cruz and Anthony Volpe, but he is actually pretty good defensively. He's going to be the Nationals' everyday shortstop for a while, and I think they think he can be a franchise guy. I know they think he can be a franchise guy. I'm really interested to see how this guy progresses because he's still very young, only 23 years old. He could really take a next step next season. And at number eight, I have the Milwaukee Brewers, Willie Adamas. Willie Adamas has always been, I think, pretty underrated all things considered, he's a guy who started with the Rays, then the Brewers, two smaller market teams, so not many people take notice of what this guy's been up to in his career, but he's had four really good seasons now. Last year, 149 games, 29 doubles, 24 homers, 80 runs batted in, 73 runs scored, five stolen bases. Really, really good defensively. Only hit 217, so the batting average wasn't great, but the slugging at 407, the on base at 310, so he kind of made up for the bad batting average, but he got a lot of walks. He's a good player. Really, really good player. I think he continues to put up top 10 seasons as a shortstop. But coming in at number seven, I had to give this honor to Xander Bogarts of my hometown team, the San Diego Padres. Xander Bogarts, in his age 31 season, didn't have the greatest of his career, but it was still pretty darn good. I think the Padres are pretty happy, all things considered, what he did. 285 batting average, 350 on base, 440 slugging, so OPS just below 800. 58 runs batted in. That's a little bit low. But he does score 83 times, 31 doubles, 19 homers, and he also stole a career-high 19 bases. So, yeah, Xander Bogarts, really good. Good with the glove as well. I mean, he was better defensively than Fernando Tatis. He forced Tatis off of that position and won it himself. That's the reason why Tatis is now an outfielder because of how good Xander Bogarts is defensively. Yeah, Xander Bogarts, really, really good player. I, I think he's going to bounce back next season because I say bounce back. Last year... That was a career, that was the third worst season of his career. And I'm telling you this because that was pretty good numbers that I just read off. Coming in at number six, I have the Chicago Cubs, Dansby Swanson. Dansby Swanson is an interesting player because he had a really had a career year in 2022 with the Braves after always being more of a glove first, not very good hitting shortstop. Then in 2022, makes an all-star team with the Braves, has a career year. 2023, makes another all-star team and has another really good season. 147 games, 81 runs, 25 doubles, 22 homers, 80 runs batted in. Strikes out 154 times. That's not great, but he steals nine bases. Still really good with the gloves. Still filthy defensively. Hit 244, so the batting average wasn't great. But a 416 slugging makes up for it. 328 on base makes up for it. Really good player. Really solid player. But he's not as good as my number five guy, Trey Turner. And Trey Turner, how about Trey Turner? He really turned his season around. He started the season off so, so, so miserably bad in his first year with the Phillies. The 30-year-old 
ended up really popping off in the second half of the season and he just went on a freaking home run tear gives him a slash line of 459 slugging 320 on base 266 batting average so career worst batting average but and also career worst slugging actually no third worst of his career slugging but he still gives himself a 779 ops and this is what i can't discount 30 stolen bases zero times caught stealing so he is fast and he does not make mistakes in the base path that's obviously super elite he also hit 26 home runs that's the second most of his career 35 doubles that's the third most of his career 76 runs batted in third most of his career scored 102 runs third most of his career and played in 155 games the second most of his career so he was durable played good defense pop speed average on base everything you want you getting out of trey turner and he's still only 30 years old which i guess feels kind of old but not really i mean we're baseball players tend to be good well into their 30s and coming in at number four this is a personal favorite of mine because i am a seattle mariners fan jp crawford jp crawford had himself a career season last year let's look at the numbers to con to just make sure this a 266 batting average 380 on base he actually led the american league with 94 walks so that helped his on base percentage a lot 438 slugging so he gets an 818 ops 19 home runs by far his career high 35 doubles second most of his career there 65 runs batted in that's a career high 94 runs scored that's also a career high and again really good defensively he's not a gold glove talent defensively like he maybe used to be but he's still pretty darn good with the glove at shortstop jp crawford coming at number four but i have to tell you the top three guys are all really really good and i could not put jp in the top four and then into the top three even though i love the guy because number three give it Corey seager now Corey seager is interesting because you're going to say levi how is he not number one he finished second in mvp voting he was the mlb all mlb team shortstop number one shortstop of the year for the all mlb team he won the world series played for the best team why is Corey seager not number one levi I'll tell you why it's because he got injured and again if you watch my previous videos you know how i operate i'm not ranking players off talent if i was ranking them on talent he probably would be number one i'm not ranking them on skill if i was ranking them on skill he probably would be number one i'm ranking them on how good their 2023 season was and how productive they were in the year of 2023 i personally think that if you get injured you have to fall a little bit in the rankings and he does he falls only to three but still 119 games this is what he did 42 doubles led the american league 33 home runs ties his career high 96 runs batted in career high 88 runs scored second most or third most in his career he hit 327 career high 390 on base career high and a 623 slugging a 623 slugging career best ops 1.013 if he had played a full season he would definitely be number one but because he got injured I have to dock him just a couple of spots, but he's still absolutely disgusting. I think overall right now, he is probably the best shortstop in the league. The only guy that really can have an argument against Corey Seager is probably Trey Turner. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's definitely either him or Trey Turner just from an overall level. But right now, yeah, he's insane. He's really, really good. He's at the peak of his career. But number two last season on production is Bobby Witt Jr. Bobby Witt jr how about this kid in just his second year he is already flashing all of the elite tools that we knew this kid had here's a season last year tell me if this, you don't think this is good 158 games super durable plays almost every game really really good glove 97 runs scored 28 doubles 30 home runs career high 11 triples 11 triples that's really really good 96 runs batted in so he was very very close to being part of the 100 runs 100 runs batted in club he steals 49 bases so 49 steals 30 home runs you know what that is that's a 30 30 season that's pretty darn good especially for a checks age 23 year old already having 30 30 seasons he hit 276 batting average 319 on base 495 slugging in 814 ops if he gets his on base percentage up to about 350 360 which i think he will once he just develops his eye a little more gets a little more patient starts to walk he's gonna be so good he's gonna be such a special player he's gonna be an mvp caliber player best player on the royals already and he's only 23 years old but finally the number one shortstop in the mlb last season it's the new york mets it's francisco lindor you're saying what makes francisco lindor the best shortstop in the league last year he wasn't even an all-star 
Well, he had a really, really good second half, and Francisco Lindor is just that good of a player. 29 years old last season. Here's what he did. He hit 254 with a 336 on base, a 470 slugging, and an 806 OPS. He stole a career best 31 bases. You're seeing this a theme. A lot of guys stealing career best in stolen bases. 98 runs batted in, 108 runs scored. So he was super productive for the Mets as far as just scoring runs, knocking in runs, 33 doubles, 31 home runs. So again, he had a 30-30 season, 31 homers, 31 stolen bases. 33 seasons are becoming really a lot like less rare, I feel like, than they used to be. And he, yeah, he was just so good. Really good defensively still. 160 games. He's super durable. The Mets are so blessed to have this guy on their team. He's a generational talent. And yeah, this is his best season since 2019. Since he went to the Mets, 2021, 2022, he wasn't necessarily elite. 2023, I think he was. So he ends up being my number one best shortstop in the league in 2023. So just to recap, Francisco Lindor, number one. Number two, Bobby Wood Jr. Number three, Corey Seager with a little asterisk because of the injury. He would be number one without the injury. Number four, J.P. Crawford. Number five, Trey Turner. Number six, Dansby Swanson. Number seven, Xander Bogarts. Number eight, Willie Adamas. Number nine, C.J. Abrams. Number 10, well, number 10 is a little uh, guy who's in prison right now. And number 11, just missed out in the top 10, Bo Bichette and Ezekiel Tavar with the surprising upside at number 12. So there you have it. This is my 2023 shortstop rankings. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you don't like what you see, still subscribe because it might be interesting. Comment down below. Who do you think should be number one? Who do you think did I overrate? Did I underrate? I know you guys are going to be mad about this Corey Seager thing, but I just couldn't put him any higher than three because of the injury. But again, he's a really, really good player. I'm not denying it. I'm not denying that. Maybe it's also the Mariners fan bias. I don't really know. But yeah, without further ado, thank you all for watching. This is Coast to Coast Sports. Well, guys, uh, we'll see you guys in the next one tomorrow. Left fielders, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be good. And yeah, thanks all for watching. See you in the next one.